In this new video series, I want to share with you five thoughts or quotes from John Saxon that I think will really encourage you in your homeschooling journey. So let's get started. Hi there, my name is Karen. Welcome back to our house. And if you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. I'd like to help parents like yourself achieve sustainable and enjoyable homeschooling. Now, I don't really talk about this a lot on my channel, I guess, but one of the biggest visions or goals for this channel is for me to amplify certain voices from the past. People who I find very inspirational, who sacrificed a lot for the educational movement in this country, especially homeschooling pioneers as well, that are just not very well, not very well known today or talked about today. So yes, in addition to Dr. Robinson and all of his great wisdom, and I hope that I can obviously share some of my own uh, strategies, tips, and experiences, I also really want to amplify those voices from the past. So even though this video is probably not the best video for me to make in, in terms of search and rank and uh, whatever, <laughs> and the algorithm, I don't care because this is truly in line with my value system and the goals for this channel. So if you do enjoy this content, please make sure that you smash that like button or leave a comment down below. That will really help to get this video out there in the YouTube space. So without further delay, let's get started. This is John Saxon's story, A Genius of Common Sense in Math Education. This is by the author Nikki Hayes. Now, I... <laughs> can't even begin to tell you how much I love and enjoy this biography and what a great job she did. She self-published this book because they told her nobody wants to read a book about a math teacher, which I think is crazy because they have made um, movies about teachers. So I will leave a link down below where you can find uh, this book, where you could purchase it. I highly encourage everybody to read it, especially if you use Saxon Math it will really make you appreciate it even more. So I just wanna do maybe five quotes at a time in this video series. So let's get started with quote number one. This is from page 47, and this is a quote from John Saxon, something that he told one of his daughters. My job is to prepare you to do anything you want in the world. Until you leave my house at 18, you'll do what you're told. Further, he would say, don't tell me what you want to do in school. You don't know what you want because you're not old enough now to make those decisions. You don't know what life holds for you as an adult and you don't know what you'll need. He goes on to say, my job is to prepare you for life. I don't care if you work at Target when you graduate and leave my house, if that's what makes you happy. If you choose to do other things, you'll be able to do so because I did my job as a father. Obviously, I really love that quote and I just see this common thread between all of those favorite educators of mine from the past and present, Dr. Robinson as well, who have the same kind of mentality when it comes to education. You are not old enough, wise enough to make the decisions of what you need right now. That's our duty, that's our job. We've lived it, right? We know what they need. And so when it comes to homeschooling, they really do need to defer to us as the parents because we know what's best for them. Just like Dr. Robinson says, you know, they don't know anything about it. It's up to us to show them. And I feel the same way as a parent that I, I don't care really what career path, what they choose to do, as long as I prepared them and gave them choices to do whatever it is that they wanted to do, right? What we're doing here with skill development, building those skills, and study habits is to give them choices to help them with their limitations because that's what holds them back so that they can have more choices later on so yes i got all of that out of this little quote but i just really appreciate you know until you leave my house at 18 you'll you're you'll do what you're told and it's funny because later on there's even uh stories where when his daughter first got her license he always pushed them outside their comfort zone when she first got her license he sent her into town to run some errands for him in the city and she's like well i don't really know my way around and he said you'll be back by four <laughs> and then another time when she was graduating high school he said i think you should spend the summer in europe and just experience it and everything and she said no uh, i don't really know the language i don't really know my way around she obviously was very hesitant about it and he said 
We'll see you in August. <laughs> your plane leaves in two weeks. We'll see you in August. So that's just the kind of dad he was. You'll do as you're told. I know what's best for you and how to best prepare you for the world. And he obviously did a really great job because like I said, they're all very successful today. The second one is not a quote, but something about him. John's appreciation of good writing with rich words was a lifelong habit according to his children. The first two books he gave Selby to read the summer after her fifth grade year were To Kill a Mockingbird and Gone with the Wind. He talked about the characters in those books as though they lived next door, she said, and that made me just want to know more about them. I couldn't put down those books. And so I, I love this quote in this story because again, this kind of goes over what Dr. Robinson talks about, about modeling. If we want them to read, they need to see us reading. This is why during RC reading time, I sit with them to read as well. I think it's important for them to see me reading, not just during that reading time, but all throughout the day. They will really do whatever it is that you're doing. You're modeling for them. And the way that he obviously was passionate about vocabulary and about books, it passed down to his children as well. So don't underestimate you modeling success for your children. Yes, teach them, teach them study habits, teach them their ABCs, teach them how to read, but don't underestimate just the power of you modeling behavior for them. And if you're excited about these books, they'll be excited about them as well. And I love that about talking about the characters and bringing them up. There's a lot of authors that are just very common names at our house. And I talk about them as if they were friends or relatives. So I think that does make an impact on the kids to want to read more. Now, number three, this story that I wanted to highlight was just the way they lived life. So both Selby and Bruce mentioned that when they went skiing, they wore multiple pairs of their flannel pajamas as long underwear, and they ate out of the trunk of their car instead of up on the mountain because it was more affordable. They ate peanut butter sandwiches and hot dogs while the other kids had lunch inside. Yet, said Selby, even with my wooden skis and secondhand boots and being 11 years old, I was on the racing team. They visited swap sales on Labor Day for those boots and other equipment and skied in sweaters and hats their grandmother made. Selby wore her brother's hand-me-down parkas. She said, we didn't look slick, but we could ski better than most anyone out there. And that had a lot to do with my dad's attitude about enjoying things. That it wasn't about possessions or what you had, but what you were capable of doing. John had told her, I want you to learn to play tennis. So when you grow up and move away and someone needs a fourth person to play tennis, you can do that. It opens doors. Learning things when you're young takes away the timidity of learning things later when you're older, he told them. You don't want to spend your life watching other people doing things and saying, boy, I wish I could do that. You just get up and do it. So I love the spirit of that, right? Of just self-teaching, always learning, but not letting money get in the way. Where there's a will, there's a way. And so if you want to teach your children these things, there are ways, right? There are free national park days and there are garage sales and hand-me-downs and free cycle and just so many opportunities, so many ways that you can go about this where if it's truly something important to you and you want them to learn, you can make it happen. And so yes, we wanna keep homeschooling very simple to the three R's, but that doesn't limit you for the rest of the day. You're free to explore all of these other interests don't just stay inside all day number four i wanted to share with you kind of this behind the scenes peek of what kind of dad john saxon is that i myself also strive to be like and it says here while johnny selby and bruce were all in college by 1978 sarah was still in high school and living with mary esther john's empty house was to become filled with his passion for producing a first year algebra textbook Bruce said that while his father became consumed with his writing, he always managed to remain engaged with his children's lives. For example, there is a home videotape in which Bruce is showing John photographs from Bruce's trip to England. The visit 
The visits included sites related to the Beatles, an important singing group to Bruce at the time. His father listened closely to the site descriptions and some songs, histories, as Bruce described everything in detail. The total absorption of John and Bruce's personal interest in the Beatles was clearly apparent as he sat quietly and looked at each photo. Bruce handed him and listened to his son's enthusiastic recounting of the trip. This is such an embodiment of who I always have in my mind, the kind of person that I want to be. Someone who listens, who really genuinely takes an interest in other people. Because I have been around people who were like this and it makes such an impression on you. And it's such a simple and free way to make someone feel like a million bucks, whether it's your child or your spouse or a friend, to just intensely listen, just listen to them and take an interest in, even if it's something that you're not really that interested in, it does make a big impact. The fifth thought that I wanna share with you here is from page 53 and it says, he had several favorite poems, including If by Rudyard Kipling, which he read to the children numerous times, Another favorite poem was by Robert Frost, The Road Less Traveled. He had that one memorized. In fact, while he was sitting in a friend's car in August 1996, two months before his death in October, John found a scratch piece of paper and wrote the poem from memory. That written paper is now framed and hanging in Selby's home. She said, this poem is his life story. He would always say, go the other way, go the way people haven't gone, that's the adventure. So here we have a mention of Rudyard Kipling, which is obviously on the RC reading list. And it just goes to show you how these poets and these authors from the past, they write so beautifully. Why are we ignoring them or passing them up for just the entertainment of today, right? But another thing that stuck out to me, because this is something that I recommend doing in my RC course for littles, is memorizing poems with your children early on. And then later on, as they're doing their writing assignments, to try to write them out from memory. This is just such a powerful tool when it comes to you know building your memory and making these poems just sort of part of you, the, the beautiful language, the expression. And I have a whole thing on the power of poetry in the bonus section for that course. You know, but that's just the, the end result there. That is just the example of what happens when you do something like that. It's something that can motivate you throughout life, throughout tough times. It keeps your mind sharp and it's a, something wonderful to pass down to your children. So all of these favorite resources of mine, favorite educators, favorite favorite passionate educators who sacrifice so much, they all have a lot of the same underlying themes and practices in common. And this is one of them when it comes to poetry. I, I really enjoyed that. Now I'm only going to cover five at a time, you know, in this series, but I just want to end with this little bonus thought here. Johnny says, one of his sons, I am proud to say after 20 years in business together, my siblings and I are still fast friends and maintain family bonds. We regularly vacation together as families. It would appear that John had been a master teacher within his home. And that's the phrase that I really want to focus on, right? The master teacher at home. And this can look a little different than what, maybe what you're thinking of. It's not just being a camp counselor and making sure that they're always doing fun things all the time, but the bigger picture here is being that pillar that of strength, right? That model of how to live life. Taking advantage of daily teachable moments, conversations, that's the big thing. Not just talking at your children, but talking with them, inspiring them, encouraging them and relationships with each other you know as siblings as the whole family unit being a team unit don't get so bogged down in the details of getting from point a to point b where it's all over in the blink of an eye and you might have some regrets of you maybe what would have focused on other things or done things a little bit differently the end goal is not just for everybody to be on their own in their own direction super successful but you're sort of missing that sense of togetherness and family and the common bond there is obviously 
the parents that they had, the house that they grew up under, the values, the vision, etc. Those big underlying themes really do a lot to keep a family together united. That's just the way I'm interpreting it. Of course, these are just my thoughts and how I'm interpreting this book that I'm reading. Please share your thoughts below if it speaks to you uh, about something else. First. All right, so that's it for part one. We're barely scratching the surface of this really wonderful biography. Again, I will leave a link down below if you'd like to order yourself a copy. And if you like the series, please smash that like button and let's bring the inside, the wisdom, the passion of John Saxon back into this modern homeschooling and just educational space in general. Now, if you are a Saxon fan, I put together a little playlist for you of some of the previous Saxon related videos that I've made. I highly encourage you to check out the controversial history of John Saxon. That's the first video that I made and I go through all his backstory. If you're new to him and not familiar with the story, as well as a recent interview that I did with Mr. Stephen Haig, who worked closely with John Saxon in writing those first Saxon textbooks. So I will leave a link down below to that playlist as well as in a card and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.